Quay. Oh. Isn't it a bit early, Audrey? Oh, don't be a wet blanket, Tom. Love, it's a wedding. I don't know. Young folk today, they don't know how to enjoy themselves, do they? And where did you get to last night? Just as things were getting interesting. Well, it'd been a long day, you know. Long day? See what I mean? We could teach him a thing or two, eh, Audrey? Oh, <laughs> I could make your hair curl. I wouldn't need no hot brush either. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Doreen, where's that daughter of yours? We can't start the celebrations without the bride. She were late for school and all, and now our own wedding. Maxine! Maxine, love, get yourself down here or them bell ringers will be having arms down to their ankles. Oh. It's only nine o'clock and there's plenty of time yet. Tom, that depends. On what? Well, whether we're just touching up with a hint of blusher or raising from the dead. Oh. Oh. I'm gonna die. Raising from the dead. Morning. Ah, oh, Ashley. A man of the match. At least you will be, be one o'clock this afternoon. So go on, sit yourself down. There's no need for all this. No need? I say no need. For a man that's making the biggest step of his life. You think Neil Armstrong took that step on the moon without a proper breakfast inside him? It's the same with marriage. Requires fortification, does wedlock. Well, it looks very nice. Thanks, Uncle Fred. You're welcome. Cheers. So, how are you feeling this morning, the mornings, eh? Fine. I thought I'd be nervous or something, but I'm just looking forward to it. Oh. Now, see, Ashley, you don't have to put on a brave face with me, you know. It's only natural for you to wake up on your wedding day and find that your feet have turned a shade of blue overnight. It's not only natural, it's traditional, which is more important. No, honestly, Uncle Fred, I feel fine. I've not got cold feet or butterflies in my belly. I've not even got angle from stag do. I'm just looking forward to making Maxine Mrs. Maxine Peacock. Oh, well, I'm pleased for you. All I wish is, instead of a peacock, it were an Elliot you were making of her, but I suppose that's <coughs> down to my decision long ago. Well, it might say peacock on marriage register. But Maxine will really be an Elliot. And always will be, just like me. Thank you. And a fine Elliot she'll make an all. Just as you'll be a fine husband to her. Like you've always been a fine son to me. Are they going to be all right? Of course they will. <laughs> Sponge them down, they'll be fine. What was Becky doing? Doing that to her dad? Did you not tell her that Daddy was going to be best man today? Well, maybe Daddy should have had more sense than me in his speech in firing line. Here. It was a speech. Was it all right? Thanks. There's nothing worse than a best man's speech that goes on and on and on and doesn't raise a giggle. It's brilliant. Oh, no. Honestly, how was it? It's bad enough being dressed up like a penguin, a flaming penguin. You'll be fine. And you know what? What? I don't have fancy you dressed up like a flaming penguin. Mm. Oh, I do love to feel a young man running his fingers through my hair. Well, don't tell your husband I get the wrong idea about me. Don't worry, love. I'm keeping you all to myself. You wait till later. Oh, that coffee did the trick, Audrey. I feel loads better now. Well, that wasn't the coffee. That was the vodka I put in it. Oh, you didn't. <laughs> well, you'll never know now, will you? Hey, no, not till I start dancing down the aisle to the wedding march. Well, if you do, just tell the vicar you possess, eh? <laughs> Maybe you'll throw in one of them exorcisms for the price of the wedding. <laughs> Audrey, you are dreadful. Maybe. But, you know, your Ashley is going to be a very lucky chap today. You are going to knock his socks off in front of that church, I'm telling you. <laughs> oh, hi, Ailey. Hiya. Hello. How's your head, Melanie? Me head? No problem. <laughs> and I'm so proud. You know, excited and nervous. <laughs> you look beautiful, Maxine. Oh, thank you. Uh, <coughs> oh, 
It's all thanks to Audrey. <laughs> oh, <laughs> feeling the effects of the night before, were you then? Just don't mention last night. I mm. wonder if that's how that nutter Sharon's feeling this morning. You're looking a bit green round the gills. <laughs> really? All right, all right, yeah, we'll take this one. All right. A wedding day is a special joy. Especially when it's yours. But its memory is its greatest gift to cherish above them all. Nice. It's freshly, Maxine. Oh, surprise, surprise. Do you want to throw some confetti on them and all? Uh, no, no. We've been drying some flower petals in a bowl. It's, uh, it's more environmentally friendly. More romantic, too. Yeah, sure. One pound ten. You shooting up shop for the wedding, then? No, Toya. I hate weddings. Oh, yeah. Of course I would. Do you? Yeah. Bye. Eey, some folk have pretty short memories round here, don't they? Some do, for some things. Other folk, of course, just live in the past. You having a go at me, Rita? I just wish... I just wish things were different, that's all. Oh, and I don't. If it isn't bad enough being slung on tip by its second cheating bloke inside a year, someone's got to go and get wed on my doorstep and remind me all about first rotten beggar. Yes, I know. But getting drunk in the Rovers and throwing a merry dance doesn't help nothing and nobody. Oh, I know, Rita. I made a complete idiot of myself. We've all done it. <sighs> Part of what makes us human is being stupid. <laughs> and that's supposed to make me feel better, is it? Being called stupid. Either that or a hair of the dog. <laughs> well, I'll settle for a copper. Right, I'll go and put kettle on. <laughs> so what do you reckon? By a cash day, you could teach Fedor Stern a thing or two about looking good in a monkey suit. You look lovely. Come here, love. Suits you better than a butcher's apron any day, Ashley. There's no wrong with lad in butcher's apparel. Where's it well, does Ashley? In the proud tradition of a purveyor of fine meats. Mind you, he makes a belt in bridegroom. He does that. Your Maxine's a very lucky girl, Ashley. No, I'm the one that's lucky, Maud. You keep telling yourself that for the next 40 odd years, and you won't go far wrong. See? Stop putting them jelly-brained ideas into his head there, Maud. Oh, Fred, you talk more tripe in a sentence than you can sell all year. Come here, love, and I'll get this on you. I'll go. Ma'am, <laughs> I told my Uncle Fred earlier that I wasn't nervous. And now? Putting my suit on and looking in the mirror. Suddenly it's really happening, isn't it? Don't worry, love. You'll be fine. Yes. Have you given up your butcher's block and got a job in a tailor's window? <laughs> Cheers. No, you look great. Yeah, some delivery bloke. Give us these outside. I'll go and put them in some water. From Kathleen. She's not coming. No. That it's for best. The future is what's on our minds today. Yeah. I do hope I'm not intruding. Oh, of course you're not. I'm just doing a bit of washing. Gary's off doing his best man bit, so it's just me and the twins. Yeah, well, that was rather why I dropped in, actually. I mean, I know the trouble you've been having following your accident, and I thought you might need a bit of help. I'm sure the twins can be a bit of a handful without Gary around. Oh, thanks, Emily. That's ever so sweet, but I can manage. My leg's a lot better, thanks. Well, it, it's really no trouble, honestly. Uh, on the other hand, if I'll just be getting in the way, please say so. No, no, not at all. I suppose spiders at wedding as well, is it? Um, I imagine so. Although, uh, actually, I, I, I couldn't really say so for sure. You see, Jeff is no longer lodging with me, I'm afraid. Mm -hmm. There's been something of a clash of attitudes. That's there. I'll tell you what. Why don't I put the kettle on? No, no. You make yourself comfy on the sofa, and I'll do it. <laughs> That's right. Um. Oh. <laughs> Having trouble, love? Here, let me give you a hand. It's all right, Mrs. Heavey, I can manage. Oh, 
stop struggling. I won't bite you. Not while anyone's looking, anyway. There. Thank you. Excuse me. Is Maxine anywhere near ready, Melanie? Because the cars will be here soon. We haven't seen her in all her glory yet. Well, Hayley was just giving it once over. All right. Are you all ready? Yes. yes. Oh, come on, let's see her. <laughs> Ta-da! Ta oh, Maxine. Do I look all right? <sighs> all right. Maxine, love, you are beautiful. <laughs> now, come on, have you got everything? Something old, something new, borrowed blue. No, I haven't got anything blue. Oh, has anybody got anything blue that uh, oh, Maxine can wear? Dear. Well, I've got blue underpants on. Oh, thank you. Oh, well, there must be something at home. I can pop back if you want. Right, ladies, the cars are here. Is the bride ready? Oh. No, I'm not. Uh, I've got an idea. Come on, Maxine, give us your hand. What are you doing, Audrey? Uh, this, I think. No, I'm not having blue nail polish on my fingers. I'm not like I've trapped my fingers in a car door. Oh, don't be ridiculous, Maxine. Now, come on, hands out. No. Well, is there another shade of blue that yeah. you prefer? No, I hate blue. No, you don't. Now, come on, give us your hand. I do now. Come on, ladies, time getting on and we don't want to uh, leave Uncle Mervyn with time on his hands, especially not at a church. Oh, I can't be worrying about Mervyn at a time like this. This is a crisis. Do you want to see your daughter go down the aisle? Imperfect. Oh, come on, it's only tradition. I will not see my daughter have anything less than the perfect wedding in every detail. Now, show those fingernails, young lady. Mum! Come on. There's always another way of dressing a chicken. Melanie, Haley, get her shoes off. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> careful then with me dress. Oh, no, don't worry, don't worry. <gasps> she's cutting it a bit fine, isn't she? Maybe she's got cold feet. I mean, Ashley's a lovely lad and all that, but can you really see Maxine scraping blood and guts off his apron come wash day? Oh, she's not got cold feet. She's just letting Ashley know that the best things in life are worth waiting for. Still, it's a good job. Terry's not providing the roller, eh? You wouldn't know what end was going to come first, would you? <laughs> We've not missed her then? No, not yet. She's probably waiting for Society magazine photographers to turn up. <laughs> when will you and Toya be walking down the aisle, Spider? Or will it be a stone circle under a full moon with dandelions in your hair? Shall we just go or what? Right then, Curly, let's get underway. Can you squeeze me in and all, Curly, because I'm a bit stuck? You'll have to take your hat off. Your carriage, my princess. Well, this is it. Next time I step foot on the street, I'll be Maxine Peacock. <laughs> <laughs> like the sound of it already. the moment for a word. What is it? I uh, see here, Ashley. There are some who say I have got as much room to advise you on the ways of happy marriage as the battleship in the Tim Bath. Dad, I... any advice you've got, I'll be glad to hear it. Would you, son? Well, it's not so much advice as a philosophy, but what is worth. There's more to marriage than wine and roses. Everybody tells you that, and it's true. It takes teamwork, with the emphasis on the work, which can be backbreaking sometimes, I can tell you. It also takes trust, loyalty, understanding, and sometimes forgiveness. But what you must never forget, what you must always cherish and protect, is the passion. Because it's a passion that makes 
makes it work, makes it all worthwhile. Never forget, never neglect the passion song. Stop what you're doing, Gary. You can't tell me that you've lost rings. Well, it's worse than that, Ash. It's my speech. I was on my way to buy some new stock, but I was going past the end of the road and the van just drove itself up here. I couldn't help it. <laughs> well, I'm not complaining. The vows you are about to take are to be made in the name of God, who is judge of all and who knows all the secrets of our hearts. Therefore, if either of you knows a reason why you may not lawfully marry, you must declare it now. Ashley Sibelius, will you take Maxine to be your wife? Will you love her, comfort her, honor and protect her, and forsaking all others, be faithful to her as long as you both shall live. Just take your time. I will. Spider and Toyer, eh? I always thought you were burning the candle for him. A schoolgirl crush. I never imagined that Geoffrey would feel the urge to reciprocate. Oh, they grow up quickly these days, Emily. Especially the Battersby's. So I've learned. Oh, I do hope I don't sound like an old fuddy-duddy Judy. I, mean, I know Geoffrey and I are different generations, but I did think that we understood each other. I'm afraid he and Toya carrying on under my roof and against my expressed wishes clearly proves that we didn't. Yeah, but you knew what was going on before you took her in. You can't expect them to ignore the urges once they're under the same roof, can you? It's called naivety, Judy. Well, there's worse things than seeing best in folk. And I'm sure Spider didn't mean to let you down. Nevertheless, I'm afraid there's no going back. A lady's not for turning, as somebody once said. Oh dear, 
He really is in trouble, isn't he? Can't wait for these two to cause me those worries. <laughs> I'm sure William and Rebecca will break many hearts, but never their mothers. <laughs> Goodness, Judy. Are you all right? Yeah. It's just a bit of indigestion, I think. Yes, I, I, I think you'd better sit down. Come on. Yeah. Sweetheart. I think I will. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Now, Maxine, will you take Ashley to be your husband? Will you love him, comfort him, honour and protect him, and forsaking all others, be faithful to him as long as you both shall live? No. They're not the words I wanted. I'm sorry, Maxine. I didn't think it were proper. What the devil's he talking about? Search me. I wanted the traditional vows. Love on and obey. That's what we agreed. Well, I don't want you saying something like that. It's like someone's out of dark ages. Please, this isn't quite in the order of service. If we can agree on something. Obey? Obey. Love on and obey. You know what you want? Thank you. Shall we? Maxine, will you take Ashley to be your husband? Will you love him, comfort him, honour and obey him, protect him, and forsaking all others, be faithful to him as long as you both shall live? I will. I now pronounce you husband and wife. You may kiss the bride. By the way, I, I changed the twins before putting them down for their sleep and you seem to be running a little low on nappies. No, oh, I know. I was going to nip at shops later on. Oh, I don't think that's a good idea. Not the way you're feeling. Why don't I go? Oh, no, Emily. It means a trip into town. Nappies are sell at corner shop are less than useless. Well, that's all right. I was intending to go into town anyway later. Um, that's if you'll be all right for an hour or two. Of course I will. Well, keep your feet up and relax, and leave that washing there until I get back, if you say so. All right then, thanks. Over here. That'd be lovely. If you're not throwing the confetti just yet! Oh well, I suppose I'll add a bit more colour. How are you feeling, Matt Shane? Oh, proud as a peacock! Do you think you'll take the plunge again? Or me personally? Mm. Oh, I wouldn't have thought so, mate. Besides, have I ever cared for someone that much? I don't know whether I'd want to saddle her with me for the rest of her life. Eh? You keep your eye on Uncle Mervyn, Derek. If you see him making a beeline for the bridesmaid, you'll be sure and head him off, all right? Oh, you can rely on me. Now, Ashley, are you as strong as you look? I don't know, it depends what you're after. <laughs> of course he's strong. He's strong as a ball, is our Ashley. I say strong as a ball. <laughs> what you are is what you eat. <laughs> but what I want, Ashley, is for you to whisk Maxine off her feet. Do you think you could do that? Oh, of course you could. Go on, Ash, get up in the <laughs> Your turn soon. Yes, boss. So. You looking forward to it? Of course I am. <laughs> looking forward to my last gasp of freedom too. <laughs> How much longer is this going to take? Hey, 
Hey, shut up! It's good practice to carry over threshold. Well, if he don't hurry up, he'll be carrying over threshold with Ernie, yeah. <laughs> don't say that! I'm not kidding! <laughs> well, you must be feeling a bit emotional, Fred. I mean, Ashley being, you know, and... Well, I mean, you just stood there as his uncle. That is not where I'm stood, Audie, love. I could be looking down from heaven above, and I'd be happy now, as in all my entire days. <laughs> Ashley knows truth of who I am, and I am content. Well, I'm glad. Oh, see, uh, you excuse me then. Okay. Sorry, love, sorry, sorry. Kathleen. Hello, Fred. Sorry. But it's not every day your little boy gets wed, is it? No, it's not, is it? I didn't want to intrude. You're not intruding. I didn't want to put anyone's nose out of joint. Beryl wouldn't thank me for showing up, I'm sure. Beryl understands the situation. Will you not come and say hello to Ashley and his new bride? <sighs> I don't think so. The crown is there for him, you know, Kathleen. We both owe him summer, don't you think? After all them years, we kept him in dark. Do just this one thing for him, won't you? I didn't think you were coming. How could I not? Come on the photograph. No, really. Oh, it didn't mean a lot to Ashley. Just one, then. <laughs> one more in picture. This is supposed to be just the immediate family. Right, then. Bella and Trevor, you stop where you are. But I want my mum and dad in picture and all. Hey, Ashley. I'm sorry, you've lost me. It's simple enough. Bella's the one that brought me up. But this is my mum and dad. Mum, did you know all this? Of course. You didn't tell anyone. Discretion, as you know, girl, is my middle name. This is hardly traditional. Excuse me, David Bailey. Are you here to take pictures at a big fault? So get on with it! Last time I saw a bar this quiet, I was on telly with the sound turned down. Well, everyone will be at the wedding. I doubt it was this quiet last night. It was Maxine's hen party. Bit of a wild child, is she? Oh, yeah, but it was Sharon letting off the fireworks last time. Sharon? Oh, yeah. Real party animal to start out with. Then when she'd had enough, or probably too much, to be precise, she lights the blue touch paper and doesn't want anybody to stand back. Have a go, was she? Well, put it this way, I don't think any of us three will be on a Christmas card list. That's the last thing I wanted. Yeah, well, don't worry, Sally. If it's any consolation, I think you'll rather suit Scarlet. That's not fair. Well, neither were you when Sharon had me down as taking Ian offer. You don't know anything. I know one thing, and you'll learn it pretty fast. Nobody, but nobody, is ever interested in the other woman's side of things. Maybe we should try somewhere else. Come on. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Melanie, thanks for being there for me today. You were a lovely bridesmaid. I'm staying with you. We're mates, aren't we? Friends are supposed to be there for each other. 
Besides, there's tradition to think about, isn't there? And what tradition's that? Well, bridesmaid always gets off with someone at wedding, doesn't she? Yeah, you're supposed to be getting married soon. Yeah, well, I'm not married yet, am I? Anyway, the best man's Gary and he's got Judy at home with two little babies. He might be your best man, Max. He isn't mine. Where is she going to sit? Where is you going to sit? Kathleen! I don't mind her being here, Fred, really I don't, but where is she going to sit at the table? You have a point. Leave it to me, I'll make arrangements. <laughs> so how long have you known? Known what? About what? Fred being Ashley's dad. Oh, months. Months? Well, so what happened with Fred and Ashley's mum? Gail? A confidence is a confidence. It doesn't matter what has been exposed here today. It doesn't release me from my vow of silence. Oh, here we are. We're over here. Oh, good. Oh, lovely. I'll be able to wave to you from the top table. I'm sitting next to Fred. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Okay, you. Yeah. My mum at Play Lady Muck at the Last Supper. <laughs> oh, 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 look at this. <laughs> this is a lovely room, Fred. And a table, you know, so often at these do's, there's no space. You can hardly see your meal properly, let alone eat it. I have been to functions when I've had to remove my hat before I dare tackle the soup course. <laughs> <laughs> but still, you're treated so well on the top table, aren't you? Audrey? Yes, Fred? Uh, now, you know, I take my keenest meat cleaver to my own right hand rather than upset you. You do know that, don't you? Fred, for heaven's sake, there is nothing you could ever do that would upset me. <laughs> well, the <clears throat> fact is, um, because of today's uh, revelations with regard to our Ashley's parentage oh, and all... Oh, now listen, nobody could be more relief here that it's all come out in the open. I mean, take it from me. Skeletons in the cupboard do not lay hidden forever. <laughs> Yeah, well, the <clears throat> fact is, now, now that uh, the tail's pinned on donkey, so to speak, uh, it's only proper that Kathleen should have her rightful place at table. You understand me, don't you, Audrey? Oh, yes, of course. Fred, do you know, I'd have thought of it myself. I mean, it's only proper. <laughs> You're a precious flower, Audrey. I say a precious flower. Now, I've, uh, I've made arrangements with the caterers and they're squeezing you in with next to you a gale. Oh. <laughs> I'll make sure you get an extra slice of beef. Hello. May I kiss the bride? Oh, of course you can. <laughs> yeah. the, the presents from both of us, me and Judy. If you don't like it, then uh, it might save you some money at Christmas. That's what me and Judy did with the ones that we couldn't stand. <laughs> <laughs> the trick is, is to remember who sent what. <laughs> oh, no, they'll be lovely. And Gary, I just want to say I'm sorry about what I said, you know, before. Forget it. And you've been a smashing best man. I just wish Judy could have been here. Well, it's a bit difficult, you know, with Rebecca and William. You might find out yourself soon enough. <laughs> well, as long as she doesn't hold it against me. Maxine, Judy wouldn't know what to do with a grudge. I don't like this, Danny. If I don't do something now, this is just going to fester and rot. Well, what are you planning to do? Anything but let Natalie Barnes have the last laugh. I'm not like her and I'm going to have to prove it. No one's saying you're like Natalie, Sally. Well, as far as Sharon's concerned, I am. I took her block the same as Natalie took Ian off and Kevin off me before that. Kevin and Natalie? When? When we were still married. Oh, everything was fine till she turned up one day. Ever since then, she's been nothing but trouble. She's a flaming curse, that woman. OK, maybe that's Natalie. That's not you. Exactly. And I'm going to make Sharon see that right now. Do you want me to come with you? No, it's all right. I'll give you a ring later, OK? OK.
She was a shop girl that Fred had a fling with. It was all very secret. She worked for him. Oh. Romance over the bacon slicer, by all accounts. Oh, yeah, that could be nasty. No, <laughs> Martin, shush. <laughs> no, but um, when she found out that uh, he'd got her in the family way, uh, Fred's sister, Beryl, brought up Ashley as her own and oh. Kathleen just disappeared into the night. Do you know, it left Fred really heartbroken. Audrey, mm. what's happened to this vow of silence of yours? Oh, come on. Oh, lovely, yes, come on. That's it, that's it, thank you. <coughs> You're enjoying yourself. Yeah, thank you very much, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. She isn't what I expected, that's for sure. And what was that then? I don't know. Someone fuller. Well, she seems very nice to me. That's what makes it all the more queer. Well, what do you mean? Well, her and him. I can't see it, no matter how hard I try. It's probably best not to think about it. Derek, go and tell Uncle Mervyn to keep his hands on the top of the table where we can see him. Now, what does the Bible say? Hey, lead me not into temptation. Guess who, Ian? And if you're there, don't bother picking up. I didn't want to speak to you anyway. <laughs> well, guess what? I've let some other bloke make a fool out of me. Getting to be a bit of a habit, eh? Yep. This one was having it away with my best friend as well. <laughs> I just get worse, don't I? Well, I just thought you might like a good laugh over that one. <laughs> it's all I'm good for, isn't it? Laughing at? <laughs> well, it must be. <laughs> no one but ourselves. <laughs> Most of it in. Because you won't get another chance. No one else will either. Just have a uh, just heard Rita trying to get all the sharing on the phone, and apparently there's no reply at the cabin, and the phone in the flat's engaged. So Rita reckons that Sharon shut up shop and has decided to pour her right out to an old friend in Nottingham. She's not having much luck, is she? No. And now Rita's wondering whether she should go home and check if she's all right. Oh, oh. tell her not to be so soft. She's a grown woman. Rita should come here and enjoy herself for a couple of hours. If Martin's right. She'll not come to any harm. No. I don't think I've got it. It is true. Most of the modern ceremony is actually based on the old pagan rituals. Is that right? Yeah, I mean, uh, the bride wearing a veil. Well, that stems from Greco Roman times. The idea was that it would ward off the evil eye. Then you've got the Egyptians. Uh, they'd exchange rings. They'd put it on a third finger because there was a vein, as they believed, that ran straight to the heart. You know a lot about weddings all of a sudden, Spider. Have you been researching the subject? No. Hey, oh, no, no, no. I just looked it up on the internet. Oh, no. 
Enjoying yourself, are you, Kathleen? Yes, it's very nice, thank you. And your Maxine makes a lovely bride. I think they'll be very happy. Thank you. This is Councillor Roberts. Oh. How do you do? How do you do? I'm a very close friend of Fred's. Oh. He's told me all about you, of course. Some time ago, actually. Has he? No. Oh. <laughs> Fred tells me absolutely everything, bless him. <laughs> so, uh, Kathleen, what have you been doing with yourself for the last 20 years, eh? Oh, you know, getting on with life. Oh, but it can't have been easy, having Ashley at the back of your mind. Well, I knew Beryl would look after him and Fred wouldn't be far away. Excuse me. No. See you later. Oh, bye. bye. See you. Mm. Question is, will she disappear into the night again or uh, is there something worth sticking around for this time? What do you mean? Well, Fred, after 20 years, he might seem a more attractive prospect, huh? Oh. From which angle's that, then? Doreen. From the angle of his wallet. Come on. I wouldn't know at all. You. Well, don't sound so excited, wouldn't you? I'm relieved. I thought it was Maxie's mum again. Got you on the run, has she? Oh, I mean, I'm all for a bit of fun, but she's old enough to be my mum, and she's married. Well, if you need somewhere to hide. What's that, sir? My heart. No, it's bridal sweet. What about fixing some surprises for the epic couple? Yeah, you're on. <laughs> <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, uh, I know that you're all enjoying yourselves, but I'm afraid it's it's time for the speeches. Do you want to start with the bed? Sounds like the best place to me. Hey, what are you doing? It's all right, it's all right. I'm just out here, I'll be in in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> so we uh, we have we've had some laughs, me and Ashley. We have we've uh, we've had some hard times as well, some some sad times. And you probably hate me for saying this, but there's something rare about Ashley. He's he's an emotional bloke, and he's not afraid to show his emotions. Now, some people might think, especially other blokes, might think that that's a, a weakness. But I think it's a strength. It, it says that you, you're not afraid to say who you are. He's honest with himself and those around him. He's a good and loyal friend. And we're all of us richer for knowing him. 
and Maxine is the best off of all of us. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I never meant to say any of this, uh, uh, but somewhere between our house and church this morning, I lost what I had written down. <laughs> it was Judy's fault. Um, she distracted me, so to speak. <laughs> aye, aye. <laughs> aye, and you were married couple. <laughs> <laughs> Me and Judy have been married for almost six years. And like most couples, we've, we've had our ups and downs. But if I was to pass anything on to Ashley and Maxine, it would be the simplest, the most obvious thing of all. It's just, just being together. Cherish it. Cherish it all your lives. I now pronounce you husband and wife. But if I was to pass anything on to Ashley and Maxine, it would be the simplest, the most obvious thing of all. It's just, just being together. Cherish it. Cherish it all your lives.